Number one, we got Uber testing a one eight one eight hundred number, which I thought was a quite a cool idea when I first saw it popping up on my stream. I think the original suggestion, um, I think the original idea that I had actually regarding the Uber testing thing is like, have you ever had been an opportunity when you have been out? and uh you don't have any battery and you've been out and night out the whole time with your friends and stuff and you've lost your friends and you've got no way to get home but you've got you know you might have money on your card but you don't actually want to pay for a taxi because it's a lot more expensive than uber right so you want to uh, get the savings of an uber without having to pay you know extra over the odds to get back home so i thought a good way to do it would be to maybe especially in the main metropolitan cities or the main kind of spots across your city like for instance let's say soho let's say liverpool street or shoreditch or old street there'll be like a little kiosk like a little imagine you know in mcdonald's how you have those kind of like touch screen screens those touch screen kind of units that you go and order from imagine if uber had something similar and they put it in soho they put it in Oxford circus they put it in liverpool street station all these kind of places and if when your phone ran out of battery you could essentially log into your account as you would do on the computer or something right um and it was somehow, and maybe the only way it wouldn't work is if you got two-factor verification on on your phone, then you would have to send you a text. And if you don't have a, you know, I know that would be the issue, but if you just log into your phone and kind of put your order through, through the tab, through the kind of on-screen thing, and, and the taxi should then come and pick you up from a designated pickup point that it picks up everyone from, and you can jump in your taxi from there. You can maybe charge your unit, your phone from the taxi you're picked up from, and then it could take you home. And then maybe you'd, do, you'd pay like a little bit of a surcharge, a little bit of an inflated rate, but it wouldn't be as much as paying for a black cab to get home. But then Uber have kind of gone the other way and really made a good way to do it because they've decided to kind of test this 1-800 number in America with, for people that don't use the app, which is which I didn't think was a big um, percentage, but I think looking at their research, they've identified people who maybe don't have smartphones or potentially don't want to have their privacy details leaked. I don't know what the issue is, but let's just read the article from The Verge to get a bit of an idea on what the approach is, but I think it's a really cool idea. So this article from The Verge says, Uber is testing out an, a new 1-800 number for people who don't use the app. Um, so here it says, uh, a vast majority of Americans, 96%, according to a new Pew Research, own a cell phone, but only 81% um, own a own a. P- Eighty-eight uh, percent own a smartphone. Okay, so ninety-six percent own a mobile, but only eighty-one percent own a smartphone. So that leaves the majority. So that leaves eleven percent of people without one, right? For that minority of those who find a smartphone difficult to navigate, Uber is testing out a new way to hail a car, a one-eight hundred number. This experiment may be new to Uber, but it's probably pretty familiar to anyone who remembers calling a car service in the pre-Uber days. The number is only available for people who live in Arizona for now. Uber says Arizonans without access to the app can call 01833-USE-UBER to request a ride from a live team member. That customer service rep, which is awesome, will provide an upfront price using the same price to algorithm that powers the app. In order to use the feature, you will need an SMS or text-based mobile phone to receive important messages about your ETA, estimated time of arrival, driver's license plate details, and the driver's name. You will continue to receive messages before and during the trip. Uh, once it concludes, you receive a, te- a trip receipt. Awesome. Uber says this was built with older people in mind through the company hopes anyone preferring conversational support will benefit. We built 1833 used Uber to expand your access to everyone that prefers a little extra assistance when they want to use our services. But you know that they're only doing this because they want full domination in it. This is the thing with startups, isn't it? They have no... I guess that happens. what happens when you get venture capital investment. There isn't... For instance, like, which is probably isn't possible in there, but if Uber was still bootstrapped and was able to kind of just like sustain itself through its own profits, they wouldn't need to do this. They would need to expand that quickly. But I guess as soon as you accept VT money, they want full and utter domination, right? Because that's the only way they're going to see big returns. They don't want to see slow and steady building. They don't want you to be, you know, bootstrapped or for you to just be using the money that you're kind of earning. They want you just to pump as much money into it just to kind of, again, um, increase their returns. So it could speak for the fact that they are trying to access or, you know, um, infiltrate a new sector of the market. And it also could be a pre uh, precursor to Uber maybe um, going flat out broke in the effort to chase every single customer that's out there. 
because I think if you've been traveling um, outside of Europe or outside of, you know, the Western world, you know that um, Uber isn't that well received in other countries and they have their own sort of like health services that use the same sort of, you know, same kind of um, app basically for the most part. Uh, so I guess for Uber, they know that they can only, they only have a certain number, they only have a certain population or certain area that they can actually dominate for the most part. Everything else is sort of out of bounds, so they have to kind of go health a level, especially with Lyft, um, you know, barking at their heels and stuff and really kind of try to cement themselves as the number one, which I'm pretty sure they are still number one um, cab or hailing, you know, service, whatever it may be in the Western world, but they can't rest in their laurels, especially with the investors um, breathing down the next. So it continues here. There's always more to be done, but this feature brings the convenience of life support to our matching technology so everyday customers get the right they want, said Daniel Sheridan, head of Uber City Operations in a statement. Customers can request a ride option in Arizona, including UberX, Uber Comfort, Uber Black, and Black SUVs, as well as an Uber Assist and Wave where available. There is no extra charge for this uh, using the service, though carrier messages and data rates may apply. To be sure, this new phone number isn't intended to general audiences. Uber would still prefer you to use the app and not swamp its new phone line with requests. In other words, it's not meant for customer services requests or lost and found style inquiries. This isn't the first time Uber has allowed has allowed for ways to get in contact with outside the app. It has revealed in 2016 that Uber maintained an emergency phone number for passengers and drivers to get in touch if with an employee. The number was always only intended for non 911 related emergencies. A few years later, the company began experimenting with voice over internet protocol or VOIOP, uh, much like Skype or FaceTime audio. The VoIP feature um, used the internet connection rather than cellular phone connection to make phone calls. But yeah, interesting to see how that go- approach goes out. Like I said, I think there is an opportunity for them to kind of, again, maybe the kiosk thing might, might be a good idea. It might get tampered with. People might steal people's DLs. I know login DL. And, but there is a part of me, I think, because I think they did that with, um, uh, rail, there was a kind of hail service they had in an airport somewhere where you could kind of hail a ride from a kiosk in an airport. I think it might have been Atlanta somewhere. They were trialing it. So I'd like to see them do something similar for like, you know, metropolitan cities. Because again, I think that would be a great, safety option too imagine for younger girls or females in general who are out on the city um getting your know, might be a wasted and lose their phone and they have an option to kind of you know log into their account if they can remember their deals and sort of like hail a cab from their uber from the uber kiosk that place there that would be a great way to do it or just charge their phone if they still have it on their persons that would be good and just in general it'd be quite a cool place to have like a little spot where you could all go to pick up your uber in one main location you know in front of everyone you know in public not in some dark anyway somewhere um re- re- hailing it because i think some people will have made that mistake where they kind of put their pickup point somewhere dark and dingy where the driver can't get it's a one-way street so imagine having just one area where you could all go and congregate um it'll make the driver's job a lot easier it'll make it easier for the you know passengers to kind of find where to go to go get their car and in general just make the whole process that much simpler but i think this 1-800 number is cool if they're looking to infiltrate the other side of the market they don't really use a smartphone so that's an interesting news there from uber on the verge